Welcome in to the CHGO White Sox Post Game Show, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome in to Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson, your host. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Alongside me is Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. We are coming to you live after a White Sox. And someone in the chat uh, recently asked, uh, why are you pausing after this? And it's mo- it's mostly the length of the losing streak determines the pause. Yes. Right? Yeah, you know what happens in the damn game. It's the why live you're watching people do. to complain. People who are live watching on YouTube do, but the person that is driving tomorrow, mowing their lawns on a Sunday or Saturday, um, they don't know. That's why they tune in to the CHGO White Sox. They don't have internet. You're here with... Uh, they don't have internet, but they nope. can download a podcast. Yep. Um, or they can hit the like button on the YouTube video. Um, like, you're going to be here with us for an hour. So sit back, strap it down, and... 45 minutes. Relax it in. Yeah. So this game was delayed for a very long time because of rain. And, uh, man, I didn't want to sit through that bullshit. Real quick, let's di- divert from the, you know, the... White Sox. Uh, Steven, you said you have the ability to do th- all three of us, uh, impressions of all three of us. Uh, We've heard your I, Herb I, one. I haven't gotten yours down yet. Well, try the Herb one. Hello. All right. That one's pretty good. Do the video one. Microphone, microphone. I see R P O. And that's how he does his mic checks. But nobody knows that at home. Learn how to spell microphone. Well, yeah. It's, he says it really fast. I yeah, can't do it that fast. He's, he's you know, he's very eloquent. Um, you can just, I, I mean, just, I just you walk know, turn really down far your back mic. here. Yeah, just turn yeah. down your mic and scream. All right, I'll go. I'll just step back a little bit. Yeah, do that. Hey, yo! Welcome into the CHGO White Sox post game show presented by DraftKings. See, sound exactly like him. That's pretty damn good. I'm taking All off right. tomorrow. Um, or actually, right now. We're coming <laughs> to you live after a White Sox loss. They lost five to one. All right, there you go. The suspense killed. I mean, like, well, I actually know? have the score backward. They, I swear they lost. Oh, oh no, we'll, Steven, we'll what did you that. do? We'll fix that. What's wrong with you? We're going to go back you? to the Twitter. That's it. Oh, no. The Astros won 5-1. to one. Um, poor, poor Sean Jankowski. I don't know if he's hanging out with us tonight. He has a kid, so he's probably not hanging out with us at, you know, uh, 12, 10 a.m. Yeah. Uh, but he, he sent me a text saying, oh, I'm, I'm betting Jose Abreu had a home run at Astros' money line. Astros' money line uh, cashed. Jose Abreu, uh, I don't know if he's ever going to hit a home run again, Herb. Ever. No, him or Andrew Benintendi. They're oh, in God, a, don't bring they're in a mid-off or a bad-off about hitting home runs. So, yeah. Uh, <sighs> Jay Cutter had the tweet, uh, 130 plate appearances. Players with 130 plate appearances this year so far uh, without a home run. It was uh, Jose Abreu, Andrew Benintendi, and uh, Yuri, Yuri Perez? No, that's the guy from uh, the, Mar- the Marlins. Um, Ruiz. Yuri Ruiz. Um, Yuri Ruiz uh, let off. Yeah, first his, pitch of the game. First pitch of, well, first pitch of the, oh, yeah, the bottom, bottom of the inning. inning. Uh, he hit us first home run of the year. So the only players with 130 plate appearances without a home run so far. Uh, Jose Abreu, who just left the White Sox, and Andrew Benatendi, who uh, basically replaced Jose Abreu. Um, I don't think Jose Abreu would save this team. I don't think Andrew Benatendi would save this team. Uh, this team just sucks. You see who's in the comments right now? Who's in the comments? Your right? man, Cody Del Mendo. What's your bets up, partner. Cody? Um, uh, Sean, do I automatically hammer the Astros run line tomorrow? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean. I Always. I the White know. Sox are bad. Like, really, really bad. I would go for any team, even those A's who are right now battling uh, Stephen uh, Nicholas's Texas Rangers to a 7-6. Yeah, it's not looking good for my bet. Bottom of 10th right now. I would bet the Oakland A's will beat the White Sox when they play them because they're playing much better baseball. Well, the one thing and scored six runs, Cody. That would, and it's okay, Matt. I mean, this is such an easy thing to deal with. I mean, it's it's the White Sox again. It, it is a game after all. You know, it is a pastime. We're yeah, just, we're not digging. We're just ditches. passing time. You know, the end of the world was supposed to happen in 2012, so we're really just playing with a uh, house money. You know, house money. So you know, we're we're just here to pass your time. Uh, have maybe you buy a nice little shirt. We have new shirts in the chgolocker.com. You know, maybe you get a new little shirt for yourself. I bought one yesterday Look at when, we, when they released them. It was great. Uh-oh. Uh, I think Steven just lost Steven, his bet. Steven, what's going yeah, on? I just oh, lost yeah. out on 200 bucks. Oh. Oakland Athletics walk-off homer. Oh, <laughs> Steven's going to ride with it. This so is, why this didn't much you hedge when they were I, up 6-5? I, I, li- I the, literally the asked him, like, I, when they got 7-5 to five in the top of the 10th, it's like, what's the cash out now? 
He's like, I'm riding with them. I'm going with it. Steven. They were up seven to five entering the top. The, L- the Oakland Athletics have gotten their eighth win of the year. Yeah. They're Jesus. eight and 31. That's how bad we are. That's yeah. that's a bad beat, but also, I mean, five leg parlay. That's that's just a bad bet right there. Yeah. I mean, but hey, you, you have four out of the five legs. Um, so, you know, Cody, just to answer your question real quick, if you should hammer the, the Astros money line. Um, Brandon Belak is pitching for the Astros, and I see that on baseball reference. I don't need to do any more stat line scouting. I don't need to go to StatCast and check any of these uh, pitch numbers, velocity, spin. Uh, J.P. Sears, who the fuck is this guy's name? Uh, John Paul. Uh, oh, France. John Paul France. Oh, yes. yeah. I see London. I see J.P. France. I see him kicking the White Sox ass. Um, Brandon Belak is a right-handed pitcher. Um, doesn't matter if Dylan Cease is on the mound. Doesn't mean, matter if he's Cy Cease. I mean, we've seen Cy Cease hold the Detroit Tigers to two runs. And uh, a guy named uh, fucking uh, Brisket yeah. held the White Sox to one run. And uh, the White Sox have this, have this issue of not scoring any fucking runs. And it, it's driving me crazy. Uh, Steven actually fixed the score. Uh, they scored one run. Again! Yeah, because and thank God Luis Robert hit a home run because if he didn't, there would be literally no highlights for the White Sox. Maybe like two Michael Kopech strikeouts. But holy shit, this team sucks. Like really sucks. Like pathetic. They've given up. Yeah, they had a team meeting today too, Sean. <laughs> like, oh man, we, we and Pedro guys, was cranky. Hey guys, we suck. And then they asked him in the pregame. He's like, Hey, why'd you have a meeting? And Pedro, to my like or to my reading, he said. Uh, maybe because it's worth three and twenty six now three and twenty seven, maybe that's the reason. I'm like, hey, watch your tone, Pedro. Watch your tone. Yes, you're bad, but don't we get no snippy on my man Scott Merkin? I'll come down and see you, brother. Well, we don't know if it was to Merk. What if it was to Vinny? If hey, it was to Vinny, I'll, I'll definitely come and see you. Oh, Pedro. I mean, that's that's our man Southpaw. I mean, he's a beloved mascot. Um, speaking of beloved, is Jose Abreu? Um, beloved in Chicago. Won an MVP in 2020. Uh, got a standing ovation uh, tonight. Had a little minute 30 tribute video. And then he came out very quickly, pumped his fist, and then ran back in the uh, the dugout. Um, was it anticlimactic because of the rain delay? Was it anticlimactic because this guy just doesn't want any of this? Is it anticlimactic because he kind of sucks? I think because the rain delay, that a Friday night game where it's 70 degrees, usually should get you 25 in May because, you know, hope spring of eternal, you're still only seven and a half games out. Even after that loss today, I think they're only still seven and a half games out because the whole entire AL central lost tonight because they're bad. Um, so you should get a nice crowd, but I'm sure walk up was affected by the two hour delay. And so you don't get the proper send off. And that seems very, very mid that, uh, video they sent him and of course Jose Abreu doesn't want any of that adulation he's like hey real quick and ran right back into the dugout it's good to see his people good to uh see guarantee rate and good to say the see the fans but I'm sure he's like that's too much for me I'll give me a number of retirement when I retire put my jersey up give me a statue but right now I'm focused on playing I'm getting my mind right so yeah, I would have loved for them to bang this game early and had a doubleheader tomorrow so they could have had a full-ass crowd seeing Jose Abreu on a bright, sun, sunny Saturday afternoon and give him his proper due instead of I don't know how many people showed up. I don't know what the announced crowd was, but it couldn't have been more than 20,000 at, at the stadium tonight. I feel like Daryl usually tweets it. Maybe Merck has it. It's On, on their thing, it says it's 18673. No, it wasn't. 18673 well, paid was, attendance. I mean, again, this game started at 920. It was originally started supposed to start at 710, right? Or mm-hmm. was it a 640? Mm-hmm. 710. 710. It's the first 710 game of the year. So people just had to wait and hang out. I mean, and I I know the status of the team, you know, why actually go and enter the ballpark? Tuggy is saying, I'm just officially hanging with friends for the rest of the year and just being at the ballpark tailgating. Um That's you know, all. I mean, you don't actually have to enter the park. No, you, you don't. don't. You don't have to give uh, Jerry money during, no, just uh, take, during rain delays. Take the red line up there, grab a drink with the people in Lot B when the game's about to start and your people go into the game. Take that red line right back to the crib. Yeah. And don't I, watch it. I, I think, you know, Jose will get something tomorrow on Saturday and, and probably on Sunday too. Uh, Aloy talking bobblehead tomorrow. Something uh, to look forward oh to. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You said tomorrow, but that it's correct because it is damn Saturday right now. 
Son of a bitch. Man. So oh, is, is it the 14th? Um, the bobblehead's on Mother's Day. It is. Yes, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Oh. I believe it is on Mother's Day. I could, I, I could be my wrong. thick skull would never. No, no, you're right. Connection. No, it's tomorrow. It, it is, is tomorrow. You are right. So you can give it to your mom. You you're can right. give it to your mom on the 14th. I was I was going to go get my mom a book. Stupid. I'll go get her a bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. And I, um, I would love for you to use game time. I know it's not game time's read time, but don't give Jerry any extra money. Just get a cheap ticket. I saw game time was having $5 tickets today. Out the door, $5. Just Tomorrow should be a nice day to go to. Perfect. Like game to go to. It's yeah. Beautiful weather. Yeah, pre- beautiful weather. And I think Sunday's a little overcast, so it would be the only game that is not going to be rain-delayed in this series. And maybe the White Sox, with their supposed ace, Dylan Cease can sneak a win out versus these Houston Astros later on today. Use code CHGO uh, for $20 off your first purchase uh, on the Game Time app. Download the app today. Uh, Herb with the plug. Why not finish it off? There is no Game Time read, but we can still plug our dear friends. Um, let's go to the Jose Abreu uh, little a video we have. Too. There is a lot There's of people. way we too got... many people here for uh, after midnight show. I mean, what else are you going to do? Thank you, people. Um, we got 14 likes, uh, Paul Canerco likes, and we got 69 viewers. Nice. Maybe we get 69 likes. That'd be real nice. I mean, I, I'm getting a little greedy here, though. I mean, that, that'd be How about that'd be Jose extreme. Abreu likes? Well, I mean, that's more than viewers. I mean, we would. I mean, that, that's that's an impossible feat at this point. Call, call your sons. Call your daughters. I, I, truly, if you, I honestly call your mom right now. Wake her up and say, "Mom, go to YouTube. Go to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. It's the only thing live on YouTube right now." Um, and, and hit that like button. Um, let's go to the dugout, the third base dugout, not the first base dugout. Jose Abreu doesn't play for the White Sox anymore. Uh, third base dugout. Uh, we'll hear from Jose Abreu about a minute and a half. Uh, he'll kind of start. His questions uh, in uh, his native uh, tongue. I was going to say tongue. Um, I guess that works. And then the translator is kind of like interlaced over it. Uh, But here's Jose Abreu talking about his time in Chicago and what it's like to be back. Yeah, I think it's a little one of our questions is because I play with a lot of guys. Obviously, guys like Chris Hale, Adam Dunn, Quintana, um, Deaza were a lot of guys that were here back in the day when I played. And a lot, a lot of the young guys, they all treated me with a lot of respect. And, you know, I can't say anything more than that. And but Eloy, he's, uh, he's my kid. So. Was there any, did you feel emotional getting on the bus, coming here, coming into the visitors' clubhouse? How, how do you kind of summarize the emotion of coming back? <laughs> you know, it's, it's what I have to go through right now, and like I said, just a lot of respect for the White Sox organization, and just something that I need to deal with right now. I know you uh, don't worry about the White Sox anymore, but are you surprised that they've struggled? I know you concentrate mostly on your team and what you want to do, but are you surprised at their record at this point? Well, I lament for what's happening, no? It's part of the world. Yeah, it kind of stinks to see what they're going through, but, you know, it's part of the game. It's a very tough game that we all play, and, you know, I think I've been going through a lot more struggles than the White Sox have, and, you know, just going to challenge, try to fight through them, and try to move on. You were taking early batting practice. How close do you think you are to breaking out of this slump? Yeah, uh, I wish I knew. I wish I, I knew I could tell you when I'm going to get out of the slump, but I think the biggest thing, I'm just going to try to battle all of it every single day. And just thanks to the Houston organization, they've respected me the whole time, supported me, and, you know, they accept me of how I am right now. So what we learned is Aloy Jimenez is uh, Jose Abreu's son, but uh, I think what the players that he named were <laughs> Adam Dunn. Chris Sale. Of course. Jose Quintana. Yeah. Got a, I got a son to the South Side. Thanks, and, Cubs. And then we can't forget the legend that he named also, Alejandro Diaz. <laughs> See if they could hear that again. Mercy. Steven. Yeah, I mean, is that are those all the greats that he played with? Yeah. I think it's a little one of our questions is because I play with a lot of guys. Obviously, guys like Chris Hale, Adam Dunn, Quintana, um, Deaza were a lot of guys that were here back in the day when I played. <laughs> you know, Dunn, Diaza, Stretch, Mercy, Todd Frazier. We love him. We love. Um, I, I don't want to say Brent Lillibridge. I don't think he was with with Jose Abreu. I want to be. I want to be very accurate. We we love Kevin Smith. Oh yeah, 
Oh, Omar Navarez, the Narve Dog. All all the greats. All uh, the Garcias. My guy, my guy, Odrigo Samar de Spagna. Avi Garcia. Leary Garcia. Irvin Santana. Whitley Garcia. <laughs> Stretch. Mercy. Um, thank you for all the likes, and thank you to Ramsey for saying, uh, Cubs fan here, but you guys deserve a like because these are some rough games. Hey, we tried to support the Cubs uh, last year, and now they're above 500. And Look the Cubs that. are Ooh. doing the White Sox a favor. Well, they're beating the Minnesota Twins, which it seems like an impossibility to, for the White Sox to go up to Minnesota and grab dubs. But the Cubs are like, all right, that's easy. Six to two. Big time victory. Chris Rumorell hit an opposite field shot. How are they beating the Twins up there in Minnesota? That's weird. Oh, man. Must be nice. Uh, I think it's just because the AL Central is uh, checks notes complete dog shit. Um, that, that list of players that he named is just offensive and should get a <laughs> Rick Hahn fired right there. That man's tenure stretched about 10 years, and he named a player who, you know, career war, 45.2. Chris Sale, and that may be not a Hall of Famer. I know that people don't even want to let Grant, Zach Greinke uh, into the Hall of Fame, uh, which is ridi- yeah, ridiculous is a great word right there. Uh, Chris Sale, Hall of Very Good. You know, Injuries kind of de- derailed that. Uh, you know, Chris Sale was a, a very important piece. Got Yohan Makata, who's now back officially full-time for the White Sox, and Michael Kopech, who, who started was, this game. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the White Sox are still, oh yeah, 13 and 27. Uh, Jose Quintana, uh, 26.4 war. I mean, that's a, very, that's a guy right there. Uh, Adam Dunn, 17.9 war. But he almost had 500 home runs. I mean, that's a that's nearly. A, well, I mean, is he a guy? I mean, he had 40 home runs, all like very for good eight years in a row, and then he got here and he hit 11 uh, his first year with the White Sox, and then he hit 40, and then again sucked yeah. the rest of his time with the White Sox. Career war of uh, with the White Sox of negative point four. Um, that uh, yeah. that tracks. And then uh, Alejandro Diaz, um, love him, uh, great, uh, of course. I'm getting mentioned by Jose Abreu. Uh, he had a, a career war with the White Sox of six point two. I mean, that he is over here, five like, years. I must say he was here forever, so <laughs> should have some type of war because they kept on playing that some bitch. And then Aloy Jimenez, who's played in fifty uh, percent of the games uh, <laughs> since twenty twenty, uh, has a career war of five point five and doesn't even play the outfield anymore. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Rick Hahn said, "Put it on me." Uh, I, again, just put those five players on his plate and say, "This is what you gave it, an MVP." This is what you gave one of the best, not it maybe the best Cuban players of all time in his prime. This just pile of crap. And since 2013, you have been like 600, maybe even 700 games as an entire organization under 500. Just nasty. And no prospects of losing his job at all. And as we were thought, he didn't speak before the game today, which he usually does the first game of a homestand so uh where you hiding rick what's going on brother um we'll take a quick break and uh we'll talk about where he is at um also courtney saying uh with the super chat thank you courtney uh thanks for your late night podcast covering this sad team i appreciate that go to sleep courtney also go to sleep and wouldn't you want your fiance home right now instead of him covering this sad team I mean, she's watching the game anyway. That's so. true. I mean, she's a, she's a diehard. Uh, shout out to Courtney. Uh, let's take a quick break. We watched this game on Fubo TV. My favorite part of Fubo TV is the hundred or not even hundred. I'm underselling it. Thousand hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. I just set the White Sox as one of my teams, and they automatically record the games. I can go back and watch them if I miss them. Wednesday, we had a day off. I was running some errands, so it was nice to go back and watch Lance Lynn get lit up by the Royals. <laughs> <laughs> they have over 100. Fast forward to that shit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no, unfortunately, uh, like... Too f- one, sorry, Fubo, one, Fubo, Fubo for cussing during your commercial. Oh, mercy. Don't be like, Damon what the hell? It's not for us or by us. <laughs> get my shit right, Herb. Um... I don't think there's a, a, a speed option of a 1.75. Like, I can't watch Lance Fast Lynn. Fast midnight. Sorry, Fubo. You can't, I'm going to be cussing. Cuss all the way. It's yeah. fun. They have 140 fucking live channels <laughs> of sports shows, movies, and news. You can stream live TV from any device. You can watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price. You can start watching immediately with the seven-day free trial. There's no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. It is the best damn deal out there. And they have events coming up like the PGA Championship, the French Open, WNBA, NHL draft on ESPN. Hey, who's drafted number one overall? The Blackhawks. The Blackhawks. Uh, and they have NHL and N. BA playoffs and again the White Sox on NBC Sports Chicago you can watch that with Fubo TV use the link in the description to sign up for 50% off your first month of Fubo Pro or go to FuboTV.com slash 
Geo. Love you, I'm Fubo. Like, I'm sorry if that uh, if that was uncouth. I'm to like swear. Gizmo after midnight. If you got me on a podcast, I'm going to cuss. So you, 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 you have me on a podcast after midnight, I'm cussing. I'm not going to turn into Don't you know, a, e- a evil, an evil person or evil magwai. I'm just going to cuss a lot. What you drinking, her? I'm drinking a 312. Only a couple of people got that because, you know, our audience uh, skews young. Magpie? Um, Magwai. It's a uh, what's the movie? Gremlins. Oh, yeah, but, like, don't feed you after midnight. Yeah, don't feed yeah, me yeah. after midnight. No, don't, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you spill this. Uh, don't water them? This, yeah, the 312. Don't, don't give you beer? Yeah. Don't give you, don't give you a delicious tall boy? Mm. Um, uh, CHGO is supported by Goose Island Beer Company. They've been Chicago's beer since 1988. Their beer roster includes the 312 Wheat Ale that Herb is drinking. They have the Tropical Beer Hug. Hey, look at this. I've been sipping this over the... Uh, 10% uh, of uh, About the 10 hours that I've been here. Uh, and it's it's 20 ounces, and it's about halfway full. Um, it is... Deliciously dangerous to drink. Um, it is a very heavy beer, um, nine point nine percent alcohol, but it is it is very tropical. Uh, a beach vacation for your taste buds. They don't undersell it. My guy Dougie can chug that quickly too. You can too, my friend. <sighs> I didn't chug those. I didn't chug those. I chugged the other hazy, the other I mean, uh, beer hugs. Can Courtney come pick you up? You want to drink a, a, a twenty? A <laughs> chug a twenty? Nah, I'm good. Oh, um, all right. I'm um, doing this one. I already had one before this. They also have the Full Pocket Pills, which is a, a nice little pilsner. It's a nice little uh, uh, Midwestern brew for for you folks. And they also have the Goose uh, Island IPA, which comes in a nice, like, green can. So grab an ultra-fresh brewery exclusive beer at Goose Island's original brew house on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in Westtown, Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer Fuck. All right. I didn't want to swear during the ad read, but again, since it's after midnight, uh, you said we could swear. Um, I, I thought her, I thought Vinny was going to join like right after we. Finished I mean, the him, they're doing things, and I'm sure Pedro's like throwing stuff in the clubhouse. You think so? Mad, and th- so he wouldn't join so, the media until after he has his whole thing. He's like we're three and twenty-seven. When did you start getting pessimistic about the White Sox? Because uh, Luis Robert hit the the seams off of baseball, and I was like, oh man, they're back, baby. I, um, you know, I, I had that male urge to say we're back, even, and then you know the male urge to say it's over. Uh, I don't know if you ever uh, seen that meme with uh, Rosling, uh, Ryan Gosling. I was yes, gonna say, I have. Uh, Ryan Gosling. Uh, Ryan Osling. I was going to just combine the, the thing. Uh, but yeah, that he hit the seams off that ball. He did. He crushed it. When did I start getting negative? In the fifth inning when Michael Kopech started Michael Kopecking. I mean, he was walking everybody yes. the entire game. Yeah, he, he looked decent, though. Yeah. Ugh. And he was mad in the first inning. I, I call what Michael Kopech did today a bad outing, a really bad outing. Um. Not only the six plus uh, six walks or seven. Uh, no, I think it was six. six walks. Do you have the stats? He only got through four and two thirds as a starter. That is piss poor. Like he, the excuses are over. Last year, I gave him a lot of excuses because it was his first full year of starting pitching. This has to stop. But Herb, he had a no hitter. Yeah. That didn't matter. No. They, it he allowed seven base runners? Exactly, because he just kept on walking everybody and their mama tonight. It was a poor outing. Michael Kopech hopefully had told Vinny and our own Jared Willis that he sucked today, and that's exactly what happened. Yes, he only gave up two earned runs. That's it. But his outing is not what they needed today because then you get exposed to the bullpen for more innings than you're getting from Michael Kopech, and that's not what you want. Well, slightly more than Michael Kopech uh, got like one more out than the bullpen did. It's not good. We need more from the starting pitchers, especially Michael Kopech, because he's going to be one of the guys who signed for next year that's coming back for next year. And we only have two of those guys. And it's him and Cease, guaranteed to come back. So we need him to show that he's ready for that role next year because – the talks and the people saying uh, he's more of a bullpen guy. Those people are kind of pessimistic. Say he's a bullpen guy. I've been always shooing him away. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, he could be a top of the rotation guy. Their voices are getting a little louder because he's showing that he is not a top of the rotation guy. Not even a back end of the rotation guy right now. Yeah, uh, Melissa saying, oh, Steve Stone said his stuff was great. Oh, I want to be more dramatic with this. Oh, Steve Stone said his stuff was great. 
Give me a break. Um, let's go to the stuff here. And Vinny is joining us, so I'll, I'll try to be quick with this. Um, I don't really disagree with Steve just because his velocity was up, and there were certain pitches where it was like, whoa. Uh, it's just that the consistency is never there with any of these baseball players. Uh, forcing fastball was up 0.3 miles per hour, and what Stoney did note on the broadcast is – uh, backed by StatCast. Uh, if you look at horizontal break on the plus minus, uh, he had uh, about two inches more of horizontal break on his fastball. So uh, about uh, 11 inches of average ride on his fastball. So not only was it rising with you know the 12 uh, inches of horizontal break, um, it's also you know, tailing in. And we saw that hit Jake Myers on a pitch. Um, so the stuff was lively. I, I can't deny that. And the one thing is it's consistently lively. So over 94 pitches, he can't control it, but it is lively, which is a good sign that he could s- throw 94 pitches in a game. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, they're like it's never consistent. It's never, nope. you know, strung along and built to six innings. But he, he can throw 94 and, and keep the speed. Um, the slider was faster today, too. It was a little bit sharper. Um, it was up 0.8 miles per hour. Um, you know, the vertical break and horizontal break look a little bit different, um, but it is just sharper. It's going faster, and that is what makes breaking balls more effective is just when you have less time to react to it. But he really wasn't trusting the curveball. We've seen him use the curveball uh, more recently, uh, and he's only th- threw it four times today, and the changeup was used. I like the changeup, but as we, if we go to the results, um, he didn't actually register a strike on it. I don't think uh, one, one called strike uh, on the changeup, but no whiffs, and that's the big thing. Five whiffs on 32 swings, a 16 percent whiff percentage and a called strike whiff percentage of 22 yeah. percent a bad outing uh 16 called strikes just really wasn't able to locate um and he's a thrower right now he's not a pitcher he hasn't developed into a pitcher yet we know he can chuck the ball but the fact that he hasn't developed into a actual pitcher that knows what he's doing take a couple mphs off if you can't control 97 Bring it down to 95, bring it down to 94, and control the pitch into the strike zone. Because, as you said, the stuff is electric. It'll still play at a lower speed. But if you're walking everybody, no one's, you can't give your defense a chance to help you out. And you're giving these guys these extra base runners. And when they hit batsmen of Myers, who damn can't, well can't hit, you're, you're giving people who can't hit extra bases. So, yeah. I understand going around Alvarez, but stop going around Maldonado and jokes and garbage like that. Right. And, hey, you threw it to, you know, Jordan Alvarez. He had a double off Kopech, right? Probably. Who had the double off Kopech? Because that was the I know first Martin was, Maldonado hit one was sharply. It, oh, was it him? All right, never mind. Uh, Jordan Alvarez then hit one to uh, Goose. And we had actually had a, a sad honk. Uh, we have Vinny Duber joining us. He almost uh, killed the Goose. Not sad honk. Um, hey, Joey's <laughs> graphic is here, thankfully. Um, take him out of the damn green room. Hi, Vinny. How are you? Hello. How's it going? Good. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. He has a post up right now that is brand new. He wrote it during the two-hour rain delay about Jose Abreu's return to Chicago. And with that rain delay and really Jose Abreu kind of struggling right now, and we heard that uh, in the video that we played earlier, um, kind of made for an anticlimactic return for Jose, no? Yeah, I would agree. I think the rain probably had more to do with that than anything that, you know, the crowd maybe wasn't as big as it could have been, but uh, not necessarily the most, you know, um, joyous behavior from Jose either. Obviously, uh, you know, they played the, the little tribute video before the game started. Of course, this was two hours after the game was supposed to start. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he watched it from the dugout. He ran out of the dugout and didn't even really stop. He kind of got to the top of the steps, raised his hand and like in all in one motion kind of went, ran back inside. So um, just not really uh, uh, a huge moment like you would expect because a, the stands weren't as full as they would be because it rained all damn day and then uh you know and then jose kind of like the give it getting kind of the all right let's get this game going mode so you know even when he stepped in the box you know he did a he he did the hat tip as he was getting a standing oh he did the he did the hello to sevi zavala and everything but kind of looked at the umpire at one point and was like all right let's let's move this along let's get the game going on so and again that could be kind of the uh 
frustration of having to sit there for two extra hours uh, given the weather tonight. But uh, yes, anticlimactic indeed. Um, not only are the White Sox uh, woefully worse than they were the last time he appeared for this team when they finished off that 500 season, but he has been mired in one of the worst slumps of his career. Um, you know, he still hasn't hit a home run this season. And I, I was looking at the numbers the other day, you know, when he played for the White Sox for all those years, a noted slow starter, right? April, cold weather, he didn't like it. And and his, his career OPS in April is really bad compared to his other months in which it's extraordinary, right? But you look at this year and it's 200 points lower than that, lower than his career number. So um, just kind of an all around downer in terms of how the White Sox are playing right now, how he is playing right now, and then the circumstances that prevented a bit of a, uh, you know, big reception from him in, in this little homecoming game tonight. Yeah, I just want to tag on, we shared this stat earlier, but uh, it is from Jay Cutta. Um, players with 130 at-bats but no home runs this season. Uh, Jose Abreu uh, with 243 career home runs. Andrew Benatendi with 73 career home runs. And then uh, Estuary Ruiz of the A's, uh, was on this list. He had uh, no career home runs, but he had his first today in the bottom of the first on the first pitch. Uh, so now the only players so far in the 2023 season with 130 plus at bats with no home runs: Jose Abreu, Andrew Benatendi. Um, feel and, free to go, um, Benny. We saw early in the game Michael Kopech kind of uh, mad after the Jeremy Pena bat, which was the second uh, out in the second inning. And then after the third out where he struck a, a hitter out, turns to the Houston Astros dugout and gives some motion like a, like, you know, quiet and, you know, he's kind of mad. Was there a concerted effort f from Michael to be angry or was there actual beef there with the Houston Astros? Because after that, I didn't really see any, like, you know, whether manufactured or real anger from like, Michael Kopech on the mound. Do you speak about that? Well, uh, he didn't elaborate too much on what kind of set him off there a little bit, um, but uh, basically alluded to the fact that he got emotional after something that was either said or done or perceived to have been said or done uh, by the Astros and that he has to avoid that. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, because it's uh, this is what fans do when they see their their team's players kind of uh, get a little angry. They kind of cheer it on. They 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 see you know see it as kind of a pro wrestling situation. He was uh, at, at the end of the day, and I'm sure the results of the game in which he walked six guys had plenty to do with it. But he was kind of uh, regretting that he got emotional and regretting that he let kind of emotion drive him a little bit when he should have been a, a little bit more dialed in and a little bit more focused and kind of blocking out that kind of stuff. Um, you know. This is uh, uh, a guy who's been struggling this year. He said he, d he didn't have the, uh, the start that he wanted to to this season, obviously. And you look at it, what I think it's four of the last six starts for him, four or more walks, two of the last three starts for him, uh, five or more walks. Um, and this is a guy who before this month never had a five walk game in his big league career. And now he's hit uh, the career high number in walks in a single start twice in the same month. So things are not going super great for Michael Kopech. And so when uh, his game plan maybe got thrown off a little bit based on uh, what was going on early in that game, uh, it didn't sit well with him at the end of the day in terms of looking in on himself. Um, we did see in the third inning a conversation or two between home plate umpire Mark Wegner and both Michael Kopech and Sebi Zavala um, in, in, in something that the broadcast might not have caught, uh, but uh, in apparently reacting to what happened an inning earlier when, when Michael Kopech was obviously pretty riled up. So, um, you know, obviously there was there weren't warnings or anything like that. He hit a guy. Uh, I believe that was in that third inning. It was the first batter in that third inning, I believe, and nothing came of it. Um, so I think at the end of the day, Michael was just kind of frustrated with his performance, as he should have been. Uh, he put seven guys on base without get them, any of them getting a hit. And uh, and I think he's kind of regretting that, uh, at least in hindsight, that, uh, that the emotions maybe took over a little too much. He, he talked so much about pressing tonight, which is something we've heard from Pedro Grafol in reference to the entire team. Uh, and Michael Kopech speaking for himself said he, he can't be doing that because it, it, lead, it leads to bad things and trying to do too much tonight, whether that was because of 
getting emotional or just because of trying to be a, a little too precise with his pitches or something like that, uh, it, it, it led to bad things, uh, not only for him, but for the White Sox this evening. Did he not want to lack urgency? Was this maybe echoed in a, a certain meeting today for the 13 and now 27 team? Uh, was that an interesting part of Pedro Grafal's pregame press conference or pregame scrum? I won't, I won't call it a press conference. That's that's too serious. More of a scrum, maybe a little a little casual meeting. Yeah. I like calling them media sessions, Sean. That makes them sound bite-sized, like maybe. That. But, uh, you know, the uh, yeah, that was mentioned, certainly. Um, you know, I think we, we saw yesterday the comments that he had after their loss in Kansas City, after the series in Kansas City in its entirety basically went very poorly for this White Sox team. Uh, you know, uh, as as much I think it was brought up after the game, there's still more than 120 games left for this team to play, not in really any sort of positive or negative connotation, just like, oh my God, there's still so much of this season left and it seems like so much of has happened already um but with 70 that and being... 50 to hit my uh preseason prediction 70 and 50 that's 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 yeah. nothing yeah not that bad. come on that's easy <laughs> but but just the, the general fact that even in in this quote unquote early and i'm not going to call it early anymore but quote unquote still early portion of the schedule um the manager of this team knows the size of the hole that this te- that the white Sox have dug for themselves and so he keeps talking about needing urgency he keeps talking about um them needing to kind of kick things into gear a little bit because they've got a lot of work to do um and so there was a pregame meeting today pedro was kind of upset that we were not that we were asking about it, but upset that it was a talking point because he doesn't really want that to escape the clubhouse. And he certainly didn't share any of the thing that was said saying he doesn't want to, and that people should just rest assured knowing that they're addressing things when things need to be addressed. But, um, you know, he was asked why, you know, why did you guys have the meeting today? And he said, we're maybe because we're 13 and 26, maybe that's the reason. Um, so, you know, you know, he, he, he obviously realizes this, uh, the, the disappointment and the um, misery that the first month and a half of the season has been for this team. Um, and he knows that even if math is going to allow them to accomplish what they still want to accomplish, they better get cracking at this pretty soon because time is going to run out quickly um, when it comes to the math as well as the general feeling, which is uh, much worse than the math at the moment. Um, I, saw, I saw you share that How I Met Your Mother Yeah, um, today. Vinny, today we get back Yoan Moncada And in true White Sox fashion We got two players Well, the other day we saw Yasmani Grandal pull up with a hamstring And then late in the game today Elvis Andres looks like he pulls something Maybe oblique or something like that More of a serious que- or a, a foolish question Does Lenin Silsa just have like a place in like Cincinnati so he doesn't have to keep, go all the way back to Charlotte or just it just just shuttles back to Charlotte. He has great frequent fire miles because this is ridiculous. Yeah, like, like every single time he goes back down, he's sent right back up. I don't even know if he is, but it looked like Elvis Andres was grabbing that oblique and obliques, as we know, with Jake Berger now getting his rehab starts in are no thing to joke with. There's no reason for the Charlotte Knights to expect Lenin Sosa to show up to work. He, he is just constantly needed by the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, I think there was a few, I think there was a few years ago where like they something like that happened and they like stopped the guy before he got on the plane and they were just like, just stay in a hotel tonight by the time the you know, like they, not that they were guessing that something bad was going to happen, that something actually bad happened the day they sent somebody out, and they're like, don't even bother getting on the plane. But um, The taxi you know, squad uh, them at this point. I know they got rid of the taxi squad, or the taxi squad is just, you know, uh, now has been, you know, COVID's not a thing anymore, uh, apparently. Uh, so, you know, th- there's no taxi squad, but, you know, maybe they just make the Lenin Sosa squad. There you go. There you go. Keep have some sort of quadruple A roster that you can keep him floating around on. Uh, but yeah, I can update you on those guys. Uh, Pedro Grafol said before the game that Yasmani Grandal's hamstring was still sore after he tweaked it yesterday running the bases in Kansas City. Um, they are going to take a couple days to evaluate it. And I, the way it was presented was that was necessary, right? That it was the whole idea of, well, 
the evaluation period of how bad this injury is is going to be long. It's going to last two or three days. They weren't able to make a decision of whether they should put him on the injured list or not. Maybe by tomorrow, maybe by the day after, they will be able to make that decision, and maybe he will go on the injured list, or maybe he will just have missed two or three games, and he'll be right back. Um, when it comes to Elvis Andrews, we heard from Pedro after the game saying that there was a swing. It was at the eighth inning, I think, that, or maybe the seventh. I don't remember which one. One of those late innings, yeah, the eighth inning, where he swung, he grounded out, and uh, he was grabbing at his side. Pedro said, yeah, some discomfort in that oblique area um, on the swing, and that's why he was lifted from the game late. Uh, They were still evaluating him after today's game, so no real update on what sort of time frame or if he even has a time frame he might be in the starting lineup tomorrow who knows but um we'll we'll get more uh specifics on that tomorrow but you're right herb i mean and, and even liam hendricks today um you know not that we're calling anything a setback for a guy who you know is pit, trying to pitch after you know beating cancer but the plan the original plan he, so he told rep, a reporter uh, uh that was covering that charlotte team was for him to maybe be back after throwing one more game in Charlotte uh, or for Charlotte on Sunday. Um, That is going to be stretched back a little bit now because he gave up two home runs last night and he doesn't feel ready for the major leagues. He doesn't want to come up and I believe as he put it, you know, be kind of a a drag on the team because he's not able to, to perform the way he wants to perform. So it might be a little bit longer. Maybe it's only one extra appearance. He said now the plan would be for him to pitch Sunday and then either Tuesday or Wednesday before they make that evaluation of ready, whether he's ready to come up or not. But nobody knows, you know, how he wants to perform quite like he does. And he's the one kind of um, saying that it, it might take a little bit longer. So, uh, you know, you, you're right. You know, Moncada comes back today and it, it should be this big, oh my goodness, the White Sox get that hot hitter from the beginning of the season back. They get this guy who's so capable, who, who could be a guy that could carry this team if he looks like the same guy who started the season and then it's like well what he's not going to have any help what can he how can he carry a team that isn't putting anybody else on base because you're pulling guys out of the starting lineup left and right let alone when you actually play a game you have three hits and four base runners against the guy making his you know second ever career major league start so um the offense was uh horrible today uh you know Luis Robert crushed that one pitch for a home run and basically that was the night there were two other hits there was one walk there were four base runners in nine innings of baseball tonight uh the White Sox uh offense did basically nothing well and that's the thing I mean Michael Kopech giving up one hit and I know he gave a lot what eight base runners or or whatever it was uh, with that that uh, hit by pitch six Um, six walks and a hit by pitch yeah and then, the hit. and then the hit. So yeah, right. there, there's eight right Benny. there. Come on, if my math is right. Um, but you know, I mean, we see that in his last outing, he gets 17 runs of support. Um, but he's also giving up four solo home runs or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's it hasn't been consistent with him, and I, I you know, it's it's it hasn't been consistent with this whole team. I mean, and I guess what has been consistent is three straight games of scoring one run. Sounds right. What? Sounds right. Have they, they've scored one run in three straight games? No, it wasn't yesterday four to three? Maybe. Yeah, it was four to three. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's take a break. Um, I got up and got this uh one of the bobbleheads that Foco donated to us, uh the set decorations. They gave us a TA one as well. Uh some awesome pieces. You can go check them out at foco.com. F O C O dot com. You're seeing the uh, South Paul bobblehead right in front of me. You can go get fitted in the best sports gear around over at foco.com. They have hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. And since it is spring and baseball season, you can get Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, bags, hopefully ponchos, everything you need for a game. So get checked out or check out foco.com or click the link in the description below for all non pre sale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Herb, do you have the comad read? I can get it All really right, quickly. Cool. Um, you're fine. I got a shady reads, uh, raids read. Uh, yeah. uh, tomorrow's going to be a sunny day, hopefully. Um, I know Sunday's kind of iffy, but if you're out of the ballpark, 
Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shade Rays have you covered with the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shade Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. They have durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shade Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they tell us that they will send you a brand new pair no questions asked. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. If you don't love your Shady Rays, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop because you're buying excellent sunglasses and their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code CHGO for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized shades. Try it for yourself. The shades rated five stars by over 250 thousand people um herb yes i'll be reader uh two if you want to be reader one the comed energy efficiency program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future sean comet offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial industrial and public sector customers of all sizes across the territory comet offers free facility assessments that can find energy-saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. I'm just wondering, uh, how do they do that, Sean? Well, an authorized engineer, a ComEd authorized engineer, will work with you. Me? You. Okay. To develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. With their in free, ooh, within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they could start working on. Vinny Olchek. Immediately. <laughs> Each recommendation will include <laughs> estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and civil payback. If you don't own a business, or if you if you don't own a business, <laughs> if you own a business, don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today for energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment. Go to comed.com slash powering biz. John, did you say comed.com slash powering biz? Yes. Spelled B-I-Z? Yes, and even Steven can hear me because he cleaned out that ear thing. Um, he, what, you got earwax? What is going on? He was he was talking about his turkey baster, and he put a turkey baster of warm water in his ear, and he, he, he checked what you're supposed to do. He, hey, and, and I don't know if it, you're and, supposed to do it with a turkey baster, but that is what you're kind of supposed it, it to do. It was that or going to the doctor, so turkey baster won that one. To a doctor in hey, six years, whatever, and he's single. whatever. Shocker. <laughs> now your ear has trichinosis. <laughs> Sounds like I should go to a doctor or something like that. Clean out that turkey base before you put that stuff in there. Vinny, I'm just picturing a cleaning person outside the door of wherever you are, and they just kind of listening in and then not hearing you for about two minutes, and then you just saying immediately, and then being again silent for another 30 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's do something fun before we get into the bad stuff, too. Um, you got bad stuff? Mm. Yeah, well, um, we'll try to be quick with the bad stuff, too. What was more majestic? Because both home runs were hit 428 feet. Luis Roberts, 110-mile-per-hour shot, or uh, Jordan Alvarez's, and Steven, get the goose honk ready, uh, Jordan Alvarez's 113-mile-per-hour blast that uh, hit the old goose if, uh, there you go. It, it, it land, you know, sad honk for the goose. Uh, Vinny, you have the floor. Luis Robert or Yordan, which one was more impressive? I think I'll go with Alvarez just because it was a little more, it was a little more looping. It had a nice arc to it. Um, and in, in that part of the ballpark, you know, in the corners, even though those are the closest to the plate, so this might sound rather counterintuitive, but it seems like you can tell when they're going farther. Like it's easier to measure how far they went when they just kind of land in the bleacher area. Again, impressive. Um, but uh, you know, oh, they land in the seats. When you get a ball that goes almost all the way past the seats, that just kind of visually has a little bit more uh, oomph to it. So I'll go ahead and go with Alvarez's uh, home run to answer that question. I agree too. It's just the sound of that home run was just deafening it's like you knew it off the bat i mean everybody knew the luis robert went off the bat but it was louder the jordan alvarez home run on tv it just sounded like a home run supposed to sound and he absolutely crushed that 93 mile per hour fastball from jimmy lambert poor jimmy lambert i mean that guy's just so good at baseball jordan alvarez it's unfair that is my vote and we'll play a little game after this but uh, we can show the the photo steven uh luis robert posing in the weird hat and jacket i just wish they wear it more he looks smooth 
he does look smooth. Um, he, he makes he wears it well. Uh, not not many can wear that weird ass shit well. Um, but Jordan Alvarez is the easy answer. I think we had a, a f- stupid trivia question that I made up uh, about which goose, uh, which home run landed closest to the goose. Uh, it was like goose shots. Uh, Jose Ramirez had one uh, that was kind of similar, but this one, the bounce it had off the seats literally would have taken it and hit the goose. That would have been a direct goose shot. So Jordan Alvarez has become my favorite player uh, hitting the old carcass of the goose. Um, But what made it more impressive, a height of 155 feet, uh, uh, just a skyrocket moonshot, a launch angle of 40 degrees. Sarah Lanks tweeted this out. One of six home runs tracked by StatCast since 2015, including the postseason at 113 miles per hour with a 40-degree launch angle, a.k.a. crush plus moonbound. Uh, let's play a little game. That is obviously one of six. Who are the five other home runs from? One player has two, uh, and then there's three other players. So uh, feel free to throw out guests. I'm just going to put Aaron Judge in one of those. Aaron Judge has a postseason, the only postseason one of 113 and a launch angle of 40 degrees. How about Giancarlo Stanton? No Giancarlo Stanton. Mm. I'm trying to think of people who hit the ball hard. I mean, we did see Gavin Sheets hit the heart, the highest pitch thrown. I would think that was a high angle one too. No, no. Okay. I mean, how about uh, how about Kyle Schwarber? No, not not Kyle Schwarber. Bryce but Harper. A, a Bryce Harper has two. Bryce Harper has two of those. Uh, two more players. Uh, one is an NL East foe, and one's an AL Central folk. You're definitely not I'll getting the Pete, AL Central folk. Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo. Ding, ding, ding. That is, that is. Uh, you got five of the six. Uh, Fran Mel Reyes. No. Different team. Uh, oh, no. Well, and he's not even on. Well, I guess he got DFA'd by the Royals, so he's not even on the Guardians or the Royals. Okay. So the Tigers then, right? Not the Tigers. Um, let's go Byron Buxton. Nope. Right team. Max Kepler. Nope. <sighs> Lefty. So we'll on never the get it. Would it be Larnick? Nope. Jose Miranda. <laughs> nope. He's a righty. Oh. Uh, yeah. Steven? Uh, M- Miguel Sano. He's a righty. Yeah, he's a righty. Damn it. I'm done. I don't have any other. I got Donovan lefties. Solano. Yeah. It, <laughs> hey, folks, it's 12.59 a.m. and you're not getting Matt Walner. <laughs> No. Matt Walner's family doesn't know who he is. Matt Wal- oh, that's that's tough. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's just wrap this up real quick. Uh, we got Michael Kopech likes. If you can, get us to 40. That'd be cool. We got 84 viewers, so 69 is possible, folks. Uh, that'd be very nice. We, we, we set that nice. earlier, and, uh, you know, that'd be, that'd be great if we were able to hit that. Um, but some people were surprised that Rick Hahn didn't speak before the game. Uh, usually after a road trip, uh, he does speak before the media or before a homestand. You and I talked before or after our show yesterday, and we were not. We were kind of talking that this would probably be a possibility, that Rick Hahn wouldn't speak. Um, I don't think you and I were surprised, but some people were. Um, maybe, you know, were you taken aback uh, it will be my question, even though I know the answers I already know. Well, I will say that today there were some extenuating circumstances with Jose Abreu being uh, not only in the house, but made available, right? I mean, we heard yesterday afternoon when Jose Abreu would be meeting the media today. So, you know, I can understand why he would uh, kind of step away and let Abreu uh, go ahead and and be kind of the focal point today. Um, that said, we'll, it will be interesting to see when he speaks next. Um, you know, it, as I mentioned earlier, there are some uh, actual, you know, roster slash injury things that will be needed to be addressed, uh, whether that's Liam Hendricks and Garrett Crochet or whether that's some of the other guys. I know Jake Berger is currently on a minor league rehab assignment or someone, uh, you know, if there is an IL stint needed for someone like Yasmani Grandal or someone like Elvis Andrews, again, decisions have not been made on that, nor could those even be decisions that would include um, an IL stint. But it, these kind of things happening, uh, plus, uh, you'll remember, uh, Rick Hahn hasn't spoken because there hasn't been a home game since uh, Aloy Jimenez had his appendectomy either. So there's a lot of, um, you know, news that uh, might need to be addressed by the general manager in addition to the whole state of the team kind of stuff that usually gets asked of him. I have nothing else. Sean. Okay. All right. Herb's tired. Um, I mean, everybody are. is. Um, it's 1 a.m., folks. So. Got to be out in Bloomingdale in 
11 hours. Mercy. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't too shocked, but you, you are right. There, there were some circumstances that uh, you, you thought might be addressed. But, I mean, as you kind of talked about it yesterday, you know, you kind of got through that stuff last time with him, about eight minutes of that, and then it was about 20 minutes of, hey, so you think you're going to get fired, buddy? Hey. I well, like, I mean, then. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, like that that issue is not going away as long as the team plays like this. So right. that is, you know, I, I call it state of the team. And that's usually what he gives. And, and in years past, it's been, oh, talk about how this player is doing. Talk about how this dude player is doing. Somebody is doing poorly. What can you guys do to help him out? Some player is playing very well. Talk about how great that is. Bah, bah, bah. Right now. Uh, and certainly all throughout last year, the headlines are far more negative with this team. The main storylines are why isn't this team doing anything close to what it's supposed to be doing? Uh, if the White Sox continue doing that, those questions aren't going away. And and so, you know, when things are this dire, um, you're going to get a lot of the questions like he got last time, which had to do with his job status and, and you know, what can be done throughout the organization to, uh, you know, respond to this. So, um, you know, I, I'm not he's he hasn't done anything yet that would be considered ducking or anything like that. Uh, It's just, you know, those are the those are the hot topics. Those are the storylines. That's the big headline with this team right now, with his team right now. So, of course, he's going to be um, asked about that during the majority of any media session he might have. Yeah. And two, I mean, he said that at the end of the day, we have to win and they've done nothing but lose basically so uh, I think a lot of fans get upset with his lawyer talk or his you know kind of uh, I'll just use lawyer talk Um, and I I don't think he could really offer anything besides to the the news topics like Aloy Jimenez and and Jose Abreu uh, that really probably wouldn't just stir up fans more Um, that's it the only thing else I want to bring up uh, Herb had this note uh, uh, not what you look. You had this. You noticed this. Yes. Um. Jesus Christ. Uh. I'm sorry. Aaron Bummer has had five outings of two or more earned runs, and he has eleven outings of no earned runs. So he's either been good or he has been bad, uh, which is not good for Aaron Bummer. Uh. But I think he got his ERA under ten today. So good job, Aaron Bummer. That's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. Make sure you follow Jared Willis on Twitter at J Willis Wise instead of eyes as well. He was out at J- Guaranteed Rate Field with uh, Vinny he'll as be, well. He'll be here tomorrow also. So He'll be there on Saturday as well. Mm-hmm. Go out and get your Aloy Jimenez. Hi, Mom. Uh, talking about it as well uh, with our friends over at Game Time. Use code CHGO for $20 off. That's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at Ekinroll23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. That is Steven Nicholas. You can follow him on Twitter. Uh, don't. He doesn't have a Twitter. Uh, thank you for producing us, Steven. We'll talk to you guys on Sunday. Go Sox and hit that thumbs up button.